Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create a basic player character slash pawn. And I'm saying slash pawn because a character, a player character, is a subclass of a pawn. It is a pawn essentially with a character movement. So I'm going to start this from the very beginning. And this is primarily meant for beginners. I'm going to go into the third person. I'll just leave it called my project eight and I'll go create. This is the first step in a series of tutorials I'm going to be doing on basic core functions in Unreal Engine, kind of a back to basics. Because I think it's good to review the basics from time to time because there's just so much involved with Unreal Engine. Okay, so here we are and I'm just going to come up here to window and I'm going to load default editor layout. This doesn't take very long to do. We'll go into content drawer and we'll dock it. But this would be the first step in creating a custom player character. So look, if I go play, this is our standard third person player character. To get started on this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm on the content level folder. I'm going to go to blueprint class and I'm going to select a character. And notice what it says here. It says a character is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. So a character, what I'm calling a player character, is a pawn. It just has a movement component. So everything that applies to a pawn would apply to this character that we're going to create. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And I'm just going to call this my player. And then we're going to double click into this. And I'll just go ahead and dock it up here. And you'll see there's a capsule component for collisions. There's an arrow. We don't really necessarily need that. And then there's a mesh component and there's a character movement component. Now, if we just opened up a pawn, it might not even have a movement component. If we opened up a default pawn, it would have a movement component, but not a character movement component. So anyway, let's go ahead and just put a mesh on here, this skeletal cube, so that we have something to represent it in the scene. So once that's done, I'm just going to drag it in the scene and there it is. Now look, if I hit play, you'll see we still have our third person player character and there's our character, player character there, that cube, but we don't have control of it. So that's what we need to do is get control of that. And that's actually fairly easy to do. So I'm going to do two things to do that. I'm going to hit escape. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new game mode. So game modes are usually accessible over here on the side through the world settings. So I don't see it. So I'm going to come up here and go to world settings and there it is right here. And if we click on game mode, the game mode essentially sets the parameters for our game, the governing structures of kind of what's, what's doing what, what classes of things are going to be in play in our game. Here's where we can override the default ones, but what we're going to do, Instead of switching out, we could just switch the game mode, but instead of switching the game mode, we're going to create our own game mode, a fresh one. What I'm going to do is right click blueprint class and go to game mode base. Game mode base is the most generic game mode that there is. So it's the, you can think of it as the, the minimalist, the most minimum game mode base there is. I'm just going to call this my game mode here. And if we click into it, we actually don't even need to do anything in here. Everything's all set. You'll see that the default pawn class is set to default pawn. And then we can just leave everything set. But notice that there's no BP third person in here, right? So we don't want that one. We're just creating our own. So I can close that. And then what I can do is come back in here to the third person template and where it says game mode, I can select my game mode right there. Now it takes effect with everything. So now if I hit play, you'll see I'm over here and I can move around, but what's going on? I'm not in charge of that pawn yet. So what I'm in right now is just the, I'm in a pawn class, the default pawn class. And if you want to see it, you come up here let me hit shift F1 and I click this right here and I fly a little bit away. You'll see that's the default pawn structure right there. And if I click this, it puts the player controller back in charge. So when I hit this game mode and start the game, I come into the default pawn. 
not this pawn that we created, not my player that I created over there. So let me hit escape. To take control of this, what I have to do is select it here. And if I just come to the details panel and I search for something called auto possess, and I should see right here where it says auto possess player, it's disabled and it says pawn. We just have to switch this to player zero. So now when I hit play, I'm locked in the position of my player pawn right now. So I'm not in the default pawn, I'm in my pawn right now. There's just one little issue and I don't have any controls to move. So if I hit escape and come out of this, one thing I can do real easy, there's already input controls built for us in the third person player. So I can come in here, double click into the BP third person. I can just copy all these controls because they're already mapped out. Just go control C, go into my player here, go in the event graph here, delete those nodes, hit control V. I should be able to compile this without errors. And now I have all my input actions and everything set up. So now if I come back in here to third person and I hit play, you'll see I can move around now freely. And I can even, I have a little bit of a jump even there. So here at this level, we've now created a player character pawn that we can then use to interact with our game and explore our game environment. And notice this player pawn cannot fly. He's bound to the ground like a normal player character is. So this would be the first step in creating a game, a player character, without using the BP third person or first person player characters. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.